All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just to kind of reflect on what we talked about, we talked about our Monday Night Raw review. It's a very, very good Monday Night Raw. We talked about WWE NXT preview and also a WWE NXT um, possible storylines heading toward the draft. And um, we also had a we kind of dig we kind of dig a little bit deeper of a uh, what happened to Ray Ripley. What does this mean for her future? And ultimately, in our next uh, segment, we're going to talk about who will not replace Ray Ripley, because that sounds kind of mean. Who will represent the W... Sorry, the WWE World's Women's Champion. And uh, I don't know. I'm all for it. I'm ready to do this. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? All right, Champer Chump. Uh, right off the bat, we have Alexa Bliss. I love Alexa Bliss. I think that she's going to probably make a comeback in her hometown of Columbus, Ohio. So um, obviously she's a Raw Women's Champion, SmackDown Women's Champion. Um, she could definitely. Uh, is she going to come back as like kind of like that sister Abigail or like that sister Alexa kind of thing with Uncle Howdy? I don't know. I hope so. That'd be pretty badass. But uh, yeah, honestly, I would love to see Alexa Bliss come back and kind of do her thing. And will she win a championship? Will they give her the championship as soon as she comes back into the, you know, the WWE? I don't know. But um, I don't know. Her as a champion, she does uh, She does pretty pretty well. Pretty well. Next, we have the Empress. We have Asuka. Asuka, she's the first ever uh, Women's Warrior Rumble winner. She's also the, you know, a Grand Slam champion. She's achieved it faster than any other WWE Women's Superstar. So it's definitely, like, I know right now she's the tag team champion with, um, you know, Kyrie Sane, but I can see this happening. I can see her, you know, making a jump back into singles competition, which I've been dying for, for, well, and also wrestling fans, which, you know, we've been dying for, for, you know, such a long time. Next, we have Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say chump here. We got a chump right here, guys. Chump. No, I'm, no, I'm just kidding. But no, I'm not kidding about her being a chump. But I don't think she would represent the brand pretty well. I think she should stay on NXT. She should stay WWE NXT. But that's just my opinion. But um, kind of going from Rare Ripley, the Eradicator, absolutely dominant in her matches, to Roxanne Perez. Not trying to take away, you know, anything from Roxanne. But um, to be honest. I can't see her representing the WWE World's Women's Champion, kind of like Rhea Ripley is, which makes you think that maybe that they're going to give the title to some like newcomer, so that like everyone's like kind of like a placeholder, you know, like in the NFL where you draft a quarterback and then you kind of have like a like a veteran quarterback, kind of being that placeholder, kind of like how um, Alex Smith was for Patrick Mahomes. kind of like how uh, Sam Darnold was for Zach Wilson, although that didn't really line up well. But, you know, anyways, uh, so, uh, yeah, honestly, I think this is a pretty chump right now. Uh, next, we have Becky Lynch, the man. The man coming back and possibly making a title run. Um, I can kind of see that happening because she recently fought her at WrestleMania, which makes me think that if they were going to get. But then again, you know, you can't really, you know, dictate anything or, put, you know, pinpoint your finger on anything because this is an injury. This is unprecedented. They didn't expect this to happen. So, honestly, if there's anybody to carry the title pretty well, I think Becky was pretty good. I'm, I'm going to say champ here. I'm going to say champ. I think she would be a pretty good champion and, uh, you know, pretty pretty awesome. Next, we have Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair, um, the EST of the WWE. Um, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Held the title really well. Ultimately, EO Sky had to cash in her money in the bank to kind of get, you know, to steal her championship away from her. But uh, I don't know right now what they're doing with her and Jade uh, Cargill. If they're going to try to go toward uh, the WWE Women's Championship, I don't know. But all I know is uh, Bianca is very impressive, and uh, she would make a good champ. So I'm going to say champ here. Absolutely. Next, we have Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair coming back and winning the WWE World Women's Championship. Honestly... It's been a while since she's been viewed on WWE. I don't know why I keep someone doing that, but no. And I, I think um, she would make a great champion. Charlotte Flair is the best, one of the best women's champions of all time, superstar of all time. Because there's Trish Stratus. You also have like Lita. You had back in my day where you know you had Ivory, and then um, 
Oh, who else was a really, really good? Uh, yet Sable, you know, back in the Attitude Era. Yeah, fabulous movie. So the list goes on and on about these impressive girls holding titles. So honestly, I would like to see Charlotte Flair come back. So I'm going to say she's a, gonna be, you know, a champ, champ decision right there. All right, and we have EO Sky. EO Sky losing her championship to Bailey night two of WWE WrestleMania 40. Um, maybe bringing damage control from SmackDown 2, Monday Night Raw, keeping that little fad together. But to be honest, I. Don't want to see them stand together, and that might be mean, but um, I I want to see Asuka kind of pursue her singles career, and if uh, Eos Sky can team up with Kyrie Sane to fight uh, for um, the WWE Women's World Championship, maybe she could replace Asuka, and she could be the new Kabuki Warrior. I want to be you know absolutely upset about that. So uh, honestly, I would kind of prefer that. Next, you have Jade Cargill. Kind of what I mentioned about uh, Jane within the past, that uh, she's kind of had a history of injuries, and I think she's kind of still kind of, you know, play it safe. Will she be in the match? Probably. Will she win? Uh, I'm going to say mm, maybe 70%. No. And, uh, you know, like I said before, nothing against her talent or anything like that. I just don't think she's ready. She just came into the WWE from AEW. She's been impressive so far against Chelsea Green, you know, Dakota Kai, you know. Uh, <laughs> basically, no really, like, big names here. So, um, honestly, I think they should just keep, you know, keep the storyline that they have with her and Belair of challenging the, the Kabuki Warriors for the tag team titles. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say that would be a pretty chump decision for her to win. Next, we have Liv Morgan. Like, oh, God, why do I keep running into these uh, situations where you guys make me trash Liv Morgan? No, I'm just kidding. It's not you. It's me. No, <laughs> but honestly, I'm going to say, oh, God. Well, although I think that that's what WWE kind of wants to do is put the strap on uh, Liv Morgan. I'm going to say chump. I'm sorry. I'm going to say chump. Uh, next, we have Nia Jax. Nia Jax cut a pretty good promo on Monday Night Raw. Obviously, she's very impressive. She's technically bloodline, dude. She's technically bloodline, bro. But <laughs> I don't think that she's going to be taking the WWE World's Women's Championship too lightly. She's going to fight for that thing. She's ready. And to be honest, you have Bailey that turned a uh, face at uh, WrestleMania, and she's on SmackDown. And honestly, you kind of need that bad girl. You kind of need that, you know, that bad girl mentality, that heel. And Nia Jax is unstoppable. And if Nia Jax could definitely hold on to the championship where she would fight Rhea Ripley when Rhea Ripley comes back from injury, you know, where, you know, you have Nia Jax kind of kicking ass, taking names. She's held the World's Women Championship for so long. And then Rhea Ripley comes back and then she ultimately reclaims what was hers. Honestly, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I'm going to say champ here. Absolutely, champ, mate, champ. And next, you have Shanna Baszler. Love Shanna Baszler. Um, I it, like I mentioned before in my NXT, you know, segment, what they did with kind of superstars that were very successful in NXT, and that they they pick and choose when Shayna Baszler is going to be successful. Like I said before, like you kind of had her in that Elimination Chamber match where she won, and she was like beating the crap out of everybody. She even like destroyed Asuka. And I think Asuka probably has like a, you know, she's a hell of a lot more like skilled than Shayna Baszler is, at least in the WWE ring. I'm not saying, you know, within like a UFC kind of vicinity here, but um, I, it would be kind of interesting to see Shayna, you know, come out as a champion, but I'm going to say chump here. I'm going to say chump. It'd be a chump decision given her to strap. Next, you have Tiffany Stratton. Tiffy time. Uh, I love Tiffy time. Uh, I love her personality. I love how she's trying to be like a heel. I don't know if they're kind of booking her with Bailey right now in the whole Naomi situation. I kind of see her perhaps maybe getting involved next week or getting involved this week on Friday Night SmackDown where Naomi fights uh, Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship. So that could be very much what they're kind of planning her for. But I believe Tiffany Stratton is ready to kind of take the next step in her, uh, you know, in her career. So, um, and she's kind of like that heel. Did it kind of play into that heel thing? Um, where, you know, someone could try to fight her. Someone could try to beat her up. Highly doubtful because Tiffany Stratton is more than just a pretty face. She's ready to kick some butt. So, you know, those are the people that that was my champ or chump. Uh, obviously, it's going to be 
really, really hard to find someone to take over Ray Ripley and to kind of fill, up, fill out the shoes there because she was an amazing superstar. She was able to put on good matches, especially against uh, other wrestlers that really look like they really couldn't like hold her, you know, hold their own in the ring, kind of like Liv Morgan, like you know what I mean. And there's actually times where she bought where she fought uh, Becky Lynch on WrestleMania, and I was like, man. Becky looking slow. Like I don't know what Becky looked like. You know she couldn't hold Ray Ripley because she's so because Ray Ripley's like absolutely dominant. Like you can't fight the Eradicator. But um, I don't know. Sad that she lost her. Uh, you know she had to vacate her championship. But she's gonna be back better than ever. And you even saw Triple H in the background. That um, yeah, that he told him. You know, you had that hug. You had that hug. And I think that hug was like a hey. Whenever you come back, guess what? You're going to be the world's woman championship. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, um, anyways, I hope you guys are, you know, if you guys are tired of, of me talking, uh, guess what? It's the end of the show. Don't cry. Don't cry. I'll cry with you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so um, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button and leave a positive review for the show. Uh, positive feedback goes a long way, guys, uh, at the GSMC Sports Network. We love peace, love, and positivity, baby, all the way. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter, uh, slash X, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok for more content and updates. Like I said before, if you if I haven't made you a wrestling fan by now, or if you're just uh, totally annoyed at the sound of my voice, it happens a lot. Believe me, you should talk to my wife. Um, we we have a lot of other shows here on the sports, the GSMC Sports Network. We have baseball, football, basketball. We have the we have the Andrew Tate show. We have the sports show with TJ and Jeremy. So uh, and we're also um, you know we have a soccer podcast coming up. Pretty cool. We have hoops and heels. We're going to talk about, um, you know, women's sports. Women's sports is popping right now, guys. Absolutely popping. So, you know, don't don't miss the revolution. Be a part of the GSMC Sports Network bloodline. Uh, thank you once again. And, uh, of course, um, have a phenomenal day.